Alfred the Great was born in 849 in Wantage, England. He was the youngest son of King Ethelwulf of Wessex, one of the seven kingdoms that made up England at the time. He was born into a family of warriors and leaders who had been engaged in fighting the Vikings who had been raiding the coasts of England. In 871, when Alfred was 22 years old, his brother, King Ethelred, died in battle against the Vikings. Alfred succeeded him as King of Wessex, despite not being the eldest son. His reign began in difficult circumstances, as the Vikings were launching major attacks on his kingdom. Alfred's reign was marked by his military victories against the Vikings. He was successful in defending Wessex from their attacks, and he even launched campaigns against the Vikings, driving them back to their own territories. His most famous victory was at the Battle of Eddington in 878, where he defeated the Viking leader, Guthrum. To protect his kingdom from Viking attacks, Alfred established a system of fortified towns called Burrs. These towns were strategically located to protect the population and were equipped with garrisons of soldiers to defend against Viking raids. The Burrs laid the foundation for a more secure England and helped to stabilize the country. Alfred was a devout Christian and saw education as an important part of his reign. He encouraged the translation of Latin works into Old English and established schools to teach the language to his subjects. He himself was an accomplished scholar and was responsible for translating several Latin works, including Consolation of Philosophy by Boethius into English. Alfred was married to Eelswith, who was the daughter of a nobleman. They had several children, including Edward the Elder, who succeeded Alfred as king. Throughout his life, Alfred suffered from ill health. He is believed to have had what may have been Crohn's disease, a condition that causes inflammation in the digestive system. Despite his military successes, Alfred's campaigns against the Vikings were not always successful. In 878, he was forced to pay tribute to the Viking leader Guthrum to secure a temporary truce. This episode is known as the Treaty of Wedmore. However, Alfred was not deterred by this setback. He continued to strengthen his army and went on to defeat Guthrum in battle, forcing him to accept Christianity and to withdraw from Wessex. Alfred's victories over the Vikings helped to unite England and laid the foundation for the eventual unification of the country under one king. His success in repelling the Viking attacks meant that the other kingdoms of England were able to follow his example and begin the process of unification. In addition to his military successes, Alfred was also known for his efforts to reform the legal system and establish a code of laws for his kingdom. He sought to create a fair and just society, and his legal reforms laid the foundation for the English common law that still exists today. Alfred died in 899 at the age of 50. He was buried at Winchester Cathedral, which he had rebuilt during his reign. His death was a great loss to England, as he was widely regarded as one of the country's greatest leaders. Alfred is the only English monarch to be given the title, The Great. This title reflects his achievements as a leader, military commander, and scholar. Alfred's legacy includes the preservation of the English language. He recognized the importance of the English language as a means of communication and sought to promote it as a language of learning and literature. His efforts to promote English laid the foundation for the development of the English language as we know it today. Alfred is also remembered for his promotion of the arts and literature. He recognized the importance of literature in promoting knowledge and culture, and he commissioned translations of many Latin works into English. He also encouraged the writing of original works in English, and during his reign, a number of important literary works were produced. One of the most famous literary works from Alfred's time is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a historical record of England that was compiled during his reign. The Chronicle provides an important source of information about the history of England during the Anglo-Saxon period, and it is still studied by historians today. In addition to his interest in literature, Alfred was also an inventor and innovator. He is credited with the development of the candle clock, an early form of timekeeping that used a candle to measure the passage of time. He also introduced the use of water mills for grinding grain, which improved the efficiency of the production of flour. Alfred's legacy has been celebrated over the centuries, and he has been the subject of many works of literature and art. His life and achievements have been celebrated in books, plays, and films, and he has been portrayed as a hero and a symbol of English courage and resilience. Today, Alfred's legacy can be seen in the many institutions and traditions that he helped to establish. His legal reforms laid the foundation for the English common law system, and his promotion of the English language helped to establish English as the language of learning and literature in England. His military victories over the Vikings helped to lay the foundation for the eventual unification of England under one king.
Finally, Alfred's life and legacy are a testament to the power of leadership and innovation. He faced many challenges during his reign, including Viking invasions, ill health, and political unrest, but he was able to overcome these challenges through his military skill, his political savvy, and his dedication to learning and culture. His life and achievements continue to inspire people today, and his legacy remains an important part of the history and culture of England.